Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Strauss. I'm a chiropractor who specializes in the conservative treatment of scoliosis in children and adults. I've been in practice for over 40 years, and my practice is located just outside of New York City. I want to talk about scoliosis pinched nerve symptoms. But before I talk about the scoliosis pinched nerve symptoms, let me talk a little bit about the two fundamental types of scoliosis that the adult has. The reason why I'm primarily talking about adults here is that children will very rarely present with pain, but the adults will almost always present here with pain associated with the pinched nerve. There are two common causes of adult scoliosis. One is childhood scoliosis in the adult. This is called an adult with adolescent scoliosis. The other type is called de novo or degenerative scoliosis, and this is something that happens only at around 40 to 50 years of age. The child with adolescent scoliosis does not just grow out of their problem as they age, but once they achieve their skeletal maturity, they're now known as an adult with adolescent scoliosis. Of course, adult scoliosis may go undetected from childhood, and the adult may only determine that they have scoliosis when they're much older, and that really would be adolescent scoliosis in the adult, but not diagnosed until they're much older. While only around 2 to 4% of children will develop scoliosis, research tells us that a very large number of adults will develop it. And after the age of around 60 years old, over half of adults are going to have a diagnosable scoliosis. Now, I'm not saying that they all are going to require treatment, but if we were to take an x-ray of a large group of people over 60 years of age, we'd see over half of them have a diagnosable scoliosis. Which type of scoliosis the adult has is determinable by the pattern of curve that they have. It's quite recognizable because the adult will often have a scoliosis that's only in their lower back and will not have an upper back scoliosis. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to tell, but many times we can tell by looking at the x-ray what type of scoliosis this adult has. We know that scoliosis is a progressive condition. By its very nature, once the curve develops to a certain degree, the pressure of gravity pushing down on that person is going to cause the curve to be progressive throughout the person's life. Now, add into that progression the degenerative changes that happen as a natural part of the aging process. We're going to see that the bones will twist out of place due to the scoliosis, and once that torsion exceeds around 20 degrees of rotation, the discs are going to become impacted. The discs will then bulge, protrude, extrude, prolapse, and we'll start to get the pinched nerve associated with scoliosis. Degenerative changes are found not only in the adult with scoliosis, but they're also found in the adult with adolescent scoliosis. That person also is going to age up to the point where they start to get degenerative changes in their spine. So you can get a combination of both things happening. You get the adult with adolescent scoliosis. Now they're aged up to the point where they're getting degenerative changes in their spine. So you're going to get a combination effect. And that person can also be subjected to a progressive scoliotic condition. Women, unfortunately, are more prone to developing a larger degenerative curve than men because they're more susceptible to the hormonal changes that are happening as a result of menopause. And due to menopause, you can get a low bone density or osteopenia, or in a more severe case, osteoporosis. And this can actually cause collapse of the bones, and that will then provoke the curve to be accelerating. The discs, or the cartilage that's in between the bones of the spine, cushions the spinal bones. It protects the spinal bones and allows them to move. But also, as a result of the degenerative process of aging, the disc will dry out and become thin. You have ligaments that are supporting the spine on both sides. When the disc dries out, it loses its height, and so those discs that were holding the spine solid become slack. And this then allows the spine to progress into the scoliosis. We call this postural collapse. So now imagine the situation. We have somebody who's had scoliosis since childhood. They're now an adult. They have the degenerative condition. They're having also the slackness of the ligaments due to the thinning of the disc. So now that childhood scoliosis can start to become rapidly progressive due to degenerative changes. On the other hand, you have the adult with a de novo scoliosis. In other words, they had no scoliosis until they hit 40 or 50 years of age. Due to degenerative changes, due to the thinning of the disc, due to the slackness of the ligaments surrounding the spine, their spine has fallen into the curve, and this is also progressive. 
Interestingly, because the adult with the de novo or degenerative scoliosis did not start until they were 40 or 50 years of age, that curve never usually will get to anywhere near the magnitude of the childhood scoliosis. Let's look now at what is the pinch nerve. You can see on the chart here that the nerve is coming out from between the bones of the spine. And it's at this point that the nerve is vulnerable to rotation, bony compression, or where the disc is coming out and pushing into the nerve root. The symptoms associated with the pinched nerve depend on what level of the spine is being pinched. So if that nerve is in the lower back, the person may have back pain, they may have pain radiating out to their sides, they have pain in their buttock, down their leg, behind their knee, in their calf, to their foot. All these things can be due to the pinched nerve. If the pinched nerve is in the upper back, they might have pain locally in their back, but that pain can also track along the nerves between the ribs and come actually into the chest. And if they have that pinched nerve in the neck, they can get, yes, localized nerve pain in their neck, or they can get pain across their shoulders, down the arm, numbness in their hands, pain into their hands. The twisting of the scoliosis combined with the degenerative changes to the disc can also put pressure on the nerves that are supplying the internal organs. And for that reason, the person may have digestive problems, they may have incontinence with their bladder, they may have other internal organ problems that are associated with the pinched nerve. So the pinched nerve can cause pain, can cause weakness of the muscles, or can cause dysfunction of the internal organs, depending on where the nerve is pinched and which nerve is pinched. What is the treatment for the scoliosis pinched nerve? Here at the Strauss Method, we have a variety of different treatments for the different conditions that may result from the scoliosis pinched nerve. Those treatments are designed to reduce the pressure on the nerve, designed to allow the nerve to heal, designed to, sta designed, to, designed to stabilize the spine so that the spinal nerves are not being pinched anymore. For adults willing to take responsibility for themselves, the Strauss Method is a comprehensive, integrative approach towards treating scoliosis conservatively in the adult with pinched nerve symptoms from their scoliosis using custom-designed exercises, targeted stretching, various therapies which are targeting the nerve, as well as sometimes bracing, we have a comprehensive program to relieve the person's pain, stabilize their spine, and in many cases, modestly reduce the size of the scoliosis. Our approach at Strauss Method is to empower the patient to help themselves. So we develop a program here, but 99% of the treatment is done by the patient in their own home by themselves. We want to empower the patient to help themselves. This is the basic approach of the Strauss Method.